Ambassador Christian College presents the Keith Slough Commentary with Dr. Keith Slough. At any moment. Totally, completely surprising that it could take you by surprise, even though you're a Christian. You may remember in Matthew 24, verse 3, the disciples asked Jesus, What will be the sign Hello again, this is Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. Will Jesus return at any moment? I mean, will it be so totally, completely surprising that it could take you by surprise, even though you're a Christian? You may remember in Matthew 24, verse 3, the disciples asked Jesus, What will be the sign of your coming? At the end of the age, well, the King James says the end of the world. That's not talking about cosmos. The Greek word there is aeon, the end of the age. And sometimes we use the word world to refer to the planet, the earth itself, and sometimes we talk about the world we live in, meaning the age, the time, the culture, and so on. The word they use there referred to the age, the end of this age of man's ruling himself, what will be the end of that age? And Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. And he goes on, he gives all these things to look for. But he also said in, in the scripture that no man knows the day or the hour of his return. Does that mean that he could come back at any moment? Now, now before you say, well, of course that's what it means. Now, wait a minute. When Jesus said no man knows the exact day and the exact hour, does that mean we won't have an inkling, that we won't have a clue? Because remember, in Luke's account of the Olivet Prophecy, Jesus said when you see all these things come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. In other words, you know it's very near, but not until you see those things come to pass. Now, I'll tell you what, let me just flip over there right now. Well, before I do that, let me read to you what I've got open here in front of me. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep. Verse 15, if we say by, to you by the word of the Lord that we, he said this, we say that we who are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, that word if you look in the margin means to precede in Old English. The King James has written, over 400 years ago. That word now, today, means something different. The word prevent originally meant to proceed. Those of us who are alive and remain, we're still living when Jesus returns, will not precede them who are asleep, those who are in the graves, as Jesus said in John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, the Lord himself, Jesus, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump, the trumpet, Trump is just an old uh, English word for trumpet. <clears throat> I guess Donald Trump knows that. I mean, Do Donald Trump knows that. And the dead shall rise first. Now then, it says, we who are alive and remain, if we're still living when Christ returns, shall be caught up, and that's where the Latin word raptured comes from in the old uh, Latin Vulgate. It was raptured. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up or raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But when does that happen? People say, oh, it could happen at any moment. Well, let me turn over to Luke chapter 21. Because, you know, it's good to get saved and go to church and sing Amazing Grace. And there's nothing wrong with that. We should do that. But after you get saved, what do you do? There was a lady one time, she'd come to church. She heard the gospel. She accepted Christ. She was all excited and everything. She went up to her pastor. She said, now that I'm saved, now what? What's the next step? What he should have told her was, now get into the Word and study to show thyself approved unto God. That's what she should have said, quoting from 2 uh, uh, Timothy 2.15. He should have told her that. But instead, he said, well, uh, 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 go out and invite other people to church, which, of course, is something people should do, but... 
What does the Christian do besides just getting other people saved? We must grow in grace and knowledge. And so this radio broadcast is dedicated to getting you to grow in grace and knowledge. 99% probably, maybe more, of, of the audience, of our radio audience, already go to church and already claim to be Christians. And if you're not, then you should become a genuine, literally uh, converted, <clears throat> Holy Spirit-filled, born-again Christian. Everybody should do that. But assuming that you already are, it's time to learn the Bible. It's time to read the Bible. That's what we ought to do as Christians, read the Bible. And yet so many Christian folks, so many churchgoers don't have time. Well, they don't take the time. Funny, they got time to watch, what are those shows called? I don't even watch them. Uh, Hollywood something, where they talk about what's going on in Hollywood, who's marrying who, and who's dating who, and who's divorcing who. They got time for that. I can't remember the names of those shows. Entertainment Tonight, that's one of them. I don't watch them. But, you know, people, but now you watch them. Some of you can rattle off their names just like that because you watch them all the time. Well, if you have lots and lots and lots of time to read the Word of God and you're doing that, and then you have all that much more time to watch television, fine. But when you say, I don't have time to read the Bible, and yet you know every TV show, Monday through Friday, you can spell them off. You know, when I was a kid, I could do that. I could say, no, Monday night this show comes on, and on Tuesday night that show comes on. And on Wednesday night, and I could go through the nights and tell you what shows came on because I watched them. But when I got a little older, I started reading the Bible. And now that became the foremost love of my life, reading the Word of God. Not TV, not television, not that kind of stuff. That's not what I want to do is just spend all my time in entertainment because that's a waste of time, believe me. I want us to take a look at, if you got your Bible handy, now if you're driving down the road, don't do this, of course, but if you're sitting at home and you're listening to this, I want you to turn with me to Luke 21, the Olivet Prophecy, Luke's account. Uh, the Olivet Prophecy is where G Jesus is on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and three or four of them come to him and say, tell us when shall these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And so Matthew 24 is Matthew's account of that special Olivet Prophecy. Mark 13 is his account, and Luke 21 is his account. So I'm in Luke 21. Now here's what it says. Remember, there's the great tribulation coming. And then after that, after the Matthew 24, 29 says, After the tribulation, the sun goes dark, and the moon shall not give her light, stars fall from heaven. So here, now let me read this to you in Luke 21 now. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. And then shall they see, not before, but then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now notice what verse 28 says. And when these things, what things? The tribulation and the heavenly signs. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. He didn't say you've already got it. Now, let me explain. You are, if you're converted, if you're a converted, born-again Christian, You, yes, definitely. Yes, you are redeemed by the blood of Christ. But yet you're not fully redeemed because your, your body's not yet redeemed. Your body's not redeemed. Now, in Romans 8, 23, it talks about the redemption of our body. That occurs when Jesus returns and we're changed in, the, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Remember 1 Corinthians 15, 52? We're going to be changed in a moment. That's when we get our redeemed body. That's when we get our glorified body. But notice verse 28 of Luke 21. Luke 21, 28 says, When you see these things come to pass... Look up. You're not up in heaven already. You're down here on the earth. When you see the heavenly signs occur, then look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. In Old English, that means it's, it's drawing near. So Christ has not yet come back to rapture you. Not yet. He hasn't yet come back. So can can Jesus occur? Can his uh, coming occur at any second? Now I want to read to you Second Thessalonians. 
again, I want you to learn God's Word because it will benefit you. You'll be blessed to understand what the Word of God says, not just to believe the traditions of men. At the Second Thessalonians chapter 2, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of of our Lord. Now, this is talking about the second coming of Jesus. But now, some people think the second coming is divided by two phases. They say the first phase of his second coming is before the tribulation, when we meet him in the clouds, when we when we're gathered together to meet him in the clouds, and the second phase of his coming would be later on, seven years later. That's what people have assumed. Now, look at this very, very, very carefully. I want you to, if you've got your Bibles handy, look at your own Bible, or if you're driving down the road, just listen very carefully. I'm going to read it to you again. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So if, if there are two parts to the second coming, if there are two phases, he's referring to the day of his coming, which is also equivalent to the day of the rapture, that you be not soon shaken, verse 2, uh, in mind or be troubled, or by a letter from us. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means for that day. Now what day? is Paul talking about. All right, let's go back to verse 1 again. We beseech you by the coming of our Lord. That's the day he's talking about. And our gathering together unto him. Now, everybody agrees, pre-trib rapture people, mid-trib rapture people, and the post-trib rapture people. Everybody agrees. Verse one's talking about the day of the rapture. Everybody agrees on that. So I beseech you by the day of Jesus coming when we're gathered to meet him in the clouds of heaven. That's the rapture. Verse 3, don't let any man deceive you by any means. For that day, the day of the rapture, shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is the son of perdition? Check any commentary. The Antichrist who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. This this man is the son of perdition. Your, your commentaries call him the Antichrist. Revelation 13 uses the term beast. Daniel 9 calls him the beast, you see. You see? So this beast, this Antichrist, this son of perdition, is going to be revealed first before the day of the rapture occurs. Do you see that? Now, I've asked students at Ambassador Christian College here in Kannapolis, I've said, now tell me, think about this. Do you know the name of the Antichrist, the son of perdition? No, they'll say. What country is he in? Do you have any idea? No. What race is he? Is he black, white, yellow, brown? What is he? Red? What they don't know because the Antichrist has not yet been revealed. Then I ask them this question. Can you be raptured tonight, sitting in that chair where you're sitting? And you listening by radio, could you be raptured right now, driving down the road in the car? Now, people say, oh, yes, all these cars will be left driverless. But wait a minute, hold on. Even if that's true, when does the rapture occur? It occurs after the Antichrist has been revealed to mankind. Not just, now Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, and people read into that verse their own interpretation, which they interpreted to mean, therefore, he could come back at any moment, but that's not what the verse says. For example, there are certain things that could happen at any moment. You don't know the day and the hour you will die. That could happen at any moment. But there are other things that cannot happen at any moment. When you were in the first grade, did you know when you were going to graduate? Yeah, 12th grade. Did you know the exact day of graduation when you started the first grade? No. You were just told that somewhere after 12 years, if you stayed in school for 12 years, you were going to graduate, probably in May, could have been the month of June. You didn't know the day. You didn't know the hour. But you did know it would be after 12 years of school. You knew that in the first grade, didn't you? 
Well, we know when Jesus is going to return. We don't know the day and the hour, but we know it's going to be after the Antichrist is revealed. Therefore, the belief that Christ could come back at any moment is not true until after the Antichrist has been revealed. And when will he be revealed? When he goes into the temple of God, which is yet to be rebuilt. I'm out of time today. If you'd like to get some of this information in written form, we have a lesson we give to our college students here in Kannapolis uh, as part of their curriculum. We'll send it to you absolutely free of charge. It's Lesson 16 on the Great Tribulation, and it primarily deals with the coming uh, of Christ and the rapture of the church. When does the rapture occur? Is it pre-trib or post-trib? Here's the telephone number to call. Just give us your name, spell out your street address, and give us your zip code, and we'll get this to you right away. 704-938-6415. One more time, area code 704. The number is 938-6415. Until next time, this is Keith Slough. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to Dr. Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. Listen again next Sunday at 1 p.m. for the Keith Slough Commentary. That phone number once again to reach Brother Slough, 704-938-6415. 704-938-6415.